Oh, hello Hi. there. Hello there, sir. So I would uh, I would like to um, introduce the original creator and and writer, Sir Budget Tan. So oh, hello everyone. Hello Will. Thank you very much for inviting me. I've visited probably a couple of times, but I still get lost uh, with all of the uh, new functionalities. So, uh, but hello everyone. Thanks again, and thank you for you know setting this up and maintaining it. And I can't believe it's been a year uh, since it has been set up. So thank you again. Thank you to everyone that's been. Uh, coming to you know and participating and keeping a very active uh, uh discord page channel uh, i would like to introduce myself that's right uh, i'm septony one of the uh discord admins i'm pretty new at on the Tresse community so yeah uh, but ever since my so bought the six Tresse comics i i began to fall in love with your work sir well, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. and um Bex? Hello, Sir Budge. Hello, Becca. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to start off the podcast with something a little light. And since the anime was released like on June 11th, we're going to start off with that. So for our first question, Sir Budge, are there any differences with your first impressions with the anime since its release? Up until now, that has changed. Um, I still think it's still a, a very good adaptation of the comic book. It's always a challenge, you know. Again, as a comic book geek, you know, I I grew up watch, you know, reading a whole ton of comics, ending up with favorites, and seeing these favorites adapted, you know, over and over again. I mean, we've seen how many times have we seen, for example. The Dark Phoenix Saga, you know, interpreted in animation, on live action, interpreted in, you know, two two ways in two major movies, and somehow they just can't seem to capture the thing that I fe- that I had when I read the comic book. Um, and there are some like uh, Christopher Nolan's uh, Batman trilogy, where he is able to you know, get the best ingredients from the comic book and turn it into a film. So I think that's that's what the Jay and Tanya and the team did. They found you know the best ingredients uh, from the comic book and turned it into an anime that we could all enjoy and appreciate. And as Jay Jay said, one of the things, as Jay Oliva said, one of the things he also kept in mind was, aside from staying true to the essence of Trece, also wanted to put in a few surprises so that at least to uh, readers, you know, especially old readers like you guys, that it won't feel like you're just, you know, the, he didn't want it to be too predictable. So, so yeah, I mean, you know, story-wise, animation-wise, I think it's, it still uh, holds up after all these months. <laughs> Ooh! Okay, that's Speaking. a great question, sir. <laughs> uh, that, I mean, that's a great answer, rather. <laughs> So, uh, Sir Budge, uh, so uh, we've been meaning to ask, um, what is your reaction to the fans' expectation and their reception of the animated adaptation? I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at the range of people who didn't like it, right? Or or who had uh, more comments <laughs> than, than, than anyone else, right? Um, it happens and it's expected. Again, you know, we would, especially to, to, uh, whether it's, it's someone who's been, you know, started or to someone who just discovered it, it, it's really hard to meet everyone's expectations, I guess. So, so yeah, I mean, it's great to see all of the positive reactions about it, but to all of the negative reactions, uh, yeah, it was, uh, we've seen worse. Yeah. Fandom. <laughs> yeah, we agree. So, and yes, there will be debate about it. People, that's the thing. It's it's like uh, if someone has set their opinion and just wants to rant about it, then that's where you fall into that trap of, you know, trying to convince the other guy that, uh, no, you're wrong. So, <laughs> because, you know, that's his his or her opinion. And uh, when people have these opinions, it's there. That's sometimes that's the hardest thing to make them uh, to unconvince them to let go of. <laughs> 
Okay, so, sir, speaking of the anime, so the anime presented us with these new concepts and other original ideas as well, stuff taking from the comic book. So we would like to ask, is there any particular concept or idea that you saw from the anime that you wished you were the one who thought of it first? Uh, the Tansan, the Tansan spell, I think was lovely. I think that was one of the new things they brought into, you know, it's great to see how they um, read the comic book and learned, understood the thinking behind Tres's casting of spells. So, you know, and again, the Tansan is such a, is such an everyday object that we tend to ignore it. I mean, in the same way, when we use the Mercury drug logo, you know, I, it, it just made people see it in a different way. So yeah, that was that was pretty cool for me that they did that particular spell. And then of course it's interesting to see how they took the relationship of Trese and her father, how they fleshed that out uh, even further, right? I mean, compared to what we've seen in the comic book, we've only seen a bit of interaction between Trese and her father, and as well as, uh, and we kind of gave him hints about it in Trece Light and of course you know their interpretation or version of the prophecy about Trece. So in a way they like took what was book three and they extrapolated from there their own version of what the prophecy means. So of course you know it's interesting that they again they came up with that without you know we didn't have a discussion we didn't have a on their plans for the prophecy about Trese and how and of course the the reason of, of the Anton's reason for doing what he did right those are things that Jay and the team came up with again basing it on what they read on the comic book and I guess it's in the way it's their version of like playing that game of what if you know what if this was the reason why uh, he did this or that. So I, I, I find it thing that that's the route they took f uh, for it. Uh, one of the audience uh, were, was thinking, what do you think about a disco hack as a concept though? <laughs> <laughs> I, again, it's one of those things that uh, uh, it's great to see how much fun they had uh, uh, with the character oh, yeah. um, and and that they yeah they came up with the idea of disco Hank they came up with the idea of of giving him this really old car uh, that still has a cassette player and it doesn't have power windows um, and yes I can I can already smell whatever perfume it is that he put on I'm <laughs> sure it's just like oh, the perfume that my dad used to use <laughs> They would just, um, or that color that would fill up the room. So, uh, um, yeah, he's a he's a fun character, and I know everyone's been asking uh, the real Hank to cosplay that Hank. So I don't know. Let's see if he does uh, yeah. <laughs> find find the right suit for Halloween. Oh yeah. Oh, speaking of Halloween, tomorrow is Halloween, sir. So, what are your plans for tomorrow? <laughs> it's going to be. A uh, crazy day for me because uh, my five-year-old son has invited his friends to come over. So we have to prepare. <laughs> we have to prepare for uh, that. Uh, probably more more deadly than dealing with an army of Aswang is having to uh, have five-year-old children run around your house. Uh, so yeah, we're preparing for that. Uh, last night, actually, uh, one of the we went to one of the cities here in Denmark, uh, a city called Vile, and they they had their they already celebrated uh, Halloween in advance, and they already had the parade. Um, and uh, maybe it's something I can share on the or over here if I can figure out how to do that or on the Trese page, but. Uh, they've been doing it every year. They would have a parade from one end of the of the city to another, and they they would have people uh, in costume, uh, just you know, uh, scaring little kids. <laughs> some of them, some of them would really come up to your face and like you know, some of them would either uh, scare you or growl at you. And then uh, I was with one of my friends and uh, one of the female uh, vampires approached her and said, come with us and you will enjoy our, our enjoy our company for all eternity. So they were, <laughs> they were cosplaying, you know, their own each character. So 
Uh, so it was fun. And of course, you know, you could see a lot of children crying on the street as these, <laughs> uh, you know, these costume people were running around. Some of them was like on stilts. So they look like giants, you know, they look like gigante, uh, their version of the gigantes. So yeah, I mean, you know, so it, it feels like uh, Halloween over here has also become pretty big and people have gotten into the habit of, of you know, wearing costumes and just having a fun time. Uh, one question for you, sir. Um, was there any case from the first three volumes or books that you wished it was adapted in the anime? Let me think about that. Well, of course, what they obvious one that they didn't or couldn't adapt was the our secret constellation. Yeah, um, it would still be interesting to. I'm sure there's a way to to have used that <laughs> uh, without without infringing on any trademarks. Yeah, fans are uh, are itching for that, sir. <laughs> they want it to be adapted. <laughs> Yeah, I think, and and the thing is, like, um, uh, again, as you might have heard in other interviews, Tanya, the first book that Tanya read was book three, and she assumed yeah. that was book one. Yeah. So, funnily enough, that for her set the foundation of of the story. Uh, you know, relationship uh, was for her the cornerstone uh, of the story, and then. And then uh, when she read Thirteen Stations, which of course came or you know originally came out in Manila Noir, edited by Jessica Hagedorn, uh, and eventually we put it in Book Seven. Uh, when she read that, you know, uh, she as early as as early as back then, you know, 2013, I think when it came out, she was already saying, "Oh, this is a great intro to Tres's world." So I think that's the the big reason why she merged those those two stories for episode one, which is what that Ta uh, Tanya was of course the uh, the the main writer for for episode one, right? Um, what else? Well, yeah, the the Oriol story didn't um, did they pick up anything from? Oh yeah, it feels like it's yeah, like Mana Muning and the Oriol. I think were probably what, another story that they didn't get any ingredients from because like when they did episode three. They, of course, it was a mashup between uh, the Chana, which is again a great for me. That was like a, an awesome way of combining the stories of how they combine the Chanak story plus the um, what do you call this, the Nova Aurora story, and it made sense, right? It suddenly made sense of like how the abortion story in Unwanted Embrace uh, combined with. Uh, the Nova Aurora story. But yeah, I guess those would be the two ones that I would love to see them dap or pick up ingredients from, or if we can see the Oriol in a future episode, you know, we're still, if we get a future episode. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, guys, hopefully, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Please, please keep sending chocolate to, to Netflix. <laughs> hopefully, they will uh, give us a uh, season two. Oh, yeah. Speaking of uh, Manang Muning and the Oriol, sir. Um, what do you think about Spunky not existing at the moment? Yeah, um, when did we... Ah, yeah, because we first saw Spunky in, um, uh, what do you call this? In the, in the Bagyon story. That was, um, that was when we first introduced him. Yeah, I get, well, um, I guess they couldn't find, uh, I mean, looking at the, uh, uh, as, you know, anything set in the morgue, um, or, or they didn't need that particular, uh, character introduced yet. So yeah, I mean, the, um, when's the next time, I mean, the next time we get to see Spunky, I think play, um, major role is already in book six. Again, he's he's uh, in the same. I mean, you know, if you take a look at how um, the the function of Jobert in the book was oh, yeah. to be, uh, you know, he's literally he's the the guy in the chair. He's the ghost in the chair. So he's a source of information, right? So um, and that's exactly how they used him also in the anime. Um, as a source of information, he didn't, you know, uh, unlike in book three, eventually he came into play in 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 trapping the Talagbusao. So yeah, I'm sure, you know, when they find the need for Spunky, they will um, they will bring him in, and uh, I, we we hope to see him soon, uh, if ever. <laughs> Season two. <laughs>
season two. Okay. Yeah. But anyone from Netflix out there? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so let me continue with another question, Sir Village. So we've been wondering, uh, has someone of celebrity status asked you to be a part of the, the animated series? Has someone asked me to be... Oh, we, we, we... Has someone of, cele- we, of a celebrity status, sir? Asked to be, uh, if, if a celebrity has asked to be part of the, of the anime? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, I, no, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> not that I know. Unless you guys have heard of something. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, no, I mean, uh, I mean, what has happened ever since the anime came out is that, um, is, is, it's more of the, it's more of the music, uh, people. I mean, it's more of like new, new bands, new up and coming bands have, um, what do you call this? Have, you know, sent greetings and messages to, to us about, you know, oh, can we be part of the, the soundtrack and of course that's you know at the end of the day that's all up to netflix that's all up to the producers as well um but yeah i can't think of a particular celebrity <laughs> as uh at least no one has sent me messages okay all right that's, good. that's a good answer uh bex oh so hello again okay so with the anime being released um, so what's your next move? Um, it's, uh, well, you know, with the anime, we, we are, uh, that decision, I mean, um, the, the anime is really up to, uh, of course, Netflix. And then if Netflix says, uh, you know, yes, then that's still in th- that, you know, that ball goes to Jay and Tanya to figure out what the next steps are. So while we wait for that, it's really working on the next Trece book, which is what me and Kajo are doing. Well, Kajo, <laughs> Kajo seems to be doing more of the hard work these days, and I need to catch up with him uh, in, in sending him the scripts. Uh, we, we did that side story for, of course, 10 Years to Save the World. Uh, which was also an interesting, you know, exercise for me, I, which makes me wish I got to write a longer story for that. But at the same time, if I wrote a longer story for that, then that means we <laughs> would we would have been uh, further delayed with book eight. Uh, but but thankfully, Paulo Heras to uh, to be part of the anthology was like eight pages. Uh, and I heard that uh, if you watch the uh, the, the launch uh, video cast of that, I think Emiliana Emiliana of Dead Balagtas ended up creating a what a thirty-two page <laughs> book because she really had uh, a more awesome story to tell. Um, there, yeah, it's really well, what's next after the anime. It's do more of the comics. Simply put. Trying to, we're trying, <laughs> yeah. trying very I, I, hard. We, we, we saw that you posted something for Volume 8, sir, so we're hoping. <laughs> we, we... <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, sir, yes. as, an, as, a, as a viewer, as a, as a watcher on the anime, um, and let's say you're a fan on the, of the comics, what do you expect if Season 2 is announced what do you expect what storylines would you would you want to see sir yeah it it, um i mean i would still love for them to obviously pick up uh, or find inspiration or ingredients uh from the from the from four five and six uh or even seven for that matter it's (laughs) i did so the other interesting coincidence uh that happened was um, so again, you know, these things are written uh, in, you know, when they were creating the series, it was, they did it in a very confidential manner. And I only got to read the scripts when it was all done. Um, so I found it interesting that, what do you call this? Uh, when uh, Jay Oliva uh, introduced that new character at the end of episode six, right? So we saw that uh, Chinese looking character at the epilogue of, of episode six. Uh, 
Um, and then months later, and of course, I couldn't tell anyone about it, right? Then months later, um, collaborating with JB Tapia, and I asked JB, all right, so we're done with the first Verdugo story. You know, what do you want to do next? Then he comes up with that storyline where, you know, the Verdugo fights a, well, in this case, it's a Japanese, it's a character based on Japanese myth. So it's interesting that there must really be something in the air uh, that people are breathing in, you know, the some similar inspirations uh, and it's coming to them in their dreams or in their nightmares. Um, so yeah, like, uh, you know, Jay introducing that new character, I don't know where they want to take that. Uh, it would be interesting to see how he plans to, or how they plan to develop Tresa mythology, introducing that particular character. We can't uh, wait to see that also, sir, if, if season two has released. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, again, looking at how they structured things, I think they do like it. I mean, they do, and especially again for this audience, right? It's, um, I think one of the things they needed to keep in mind was they were given six episodes and they knew where it was um, a satisfy. you know, whether you binge it or whether you, or not binge it for that matter, you want the audience to have a satisfying, yeah, viewing of the story. So I would imagine that they would still want to do some kind of connecting arc that's able to maintain that episodic uh, nature of, of the comic book. Um, so let's see if they, uh, I would be very, very interested to see how, if they can, you know, get the different stories from four, five, and six, and and uh, and add their own, you know, uh, stories to it, and still be able to create a running uh, storyline that would be off in the end. I guess that's sorry. I guess that's the that's the thing, and I'm just guessing. <laughs> I'm guessing here, you know, because again, it's not like it's not like. Um, it's not like a, a TV show like CSI or X Files, right? Most of those TV shows are episodic by nature, so therefore, um, sometimes the um, and 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 to a viewer, then they're happy to watch uh, what the the usual what 13, 21 episodes of a of a season. Uh, in this case, you you want it to have a beginning, middle, and end somehow. Let's see. Okay, sir, sir. Um, so apparently, in the nineteen ninety eight, uh, you pitched a story for Marvel Knights. Have you ever <laughs> wondered about the deviation where the pitch got accepted? Do you think Tresse will still will will exist? <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, yeah, who knows? Who knows? Um, it might. It's highly possible. It might have. I mean, again, the pitch to Marvel was. Um, and for for those who don't know, so Trece is is also one of the big ingredients for Trece was a pitch I made to Marvel. Uh, was it, did I say ninety eight? Maybe it did. Yes, I think it was ninety eight. <laughs> um, to Marvel using uh, uh, what do you call this uh, C list Marvel characters. <laughs> um, what do you call this? It was, I guess, the inspiration around um, if to Marvel fan, one of the things he created, or the well, basically his main pitch to Marvel was the Marvel Knights uh, imprint. Um, so he, they essentially got um, Daredevil, Punisher, uh, who else did they get? Was it Ghost? No, not Ghost Rider. Uh, in humans. Daredevil, Punisher, The Inhumans, and there's a fourth book that I can't remember right now. And they were given, you know, liberties to reboot and revamp uh, or relaunch these characters. Um, so I thought uh, maybe I can pitch my own <laughs> and, pitch, and pitch it to Marvel Knights because, you know, it felt like Marvel Knights was trying to go for the more, you know, more mature... A very gus gus term of the grim and gritty the grim and gritty you know type of comic book 
Um, so I thought, okay, maybe I can pitch something to to Marvel. And oh, so and the other thing that was also coming out at that time was Midnight Suns. Oh. Midnight Suns was Marvel's uh, horror line. Yeah. So it was like they tried to put together a bunch of their horror characters under an imprint as well, or you know, it was a marketing handle. So they had the Ghost Rider. Um, and then they had a book, uh, they had a comic book called, um, oh, it escaped, The Dark Hold. Oh. So The Dark Hold was um, a book, it, it, it felt like X-Files meets uh, X-Files meets Marvel Universe. The Dark Hold was about an FBI, was he an FBI agent or an Interpol agent? Who was following up on stumbles upon a page from the dark hold, and what happens is whenever people get a page from the dark hold uh, and they read it out loud, of course that's the last thing you want to do when you get a page with like Latin, you know, uh, written in an ancient language. I will speak these words out loud. <laughs> so when people speak, you know, read the the page, it transforms them into some demon. So this FBI guy ends up teaming up with uh, he team up with an archaeologist, and then he teams up with I think someone from Doctor Strange's uh, side of the universe. Um, I can't remember anymore. But what I loved about it was it was exactly that. It felt like X Files in the Marvel universe. Uh, of course, in the grand tradition of Marvel, they suddenly had. Wolverine guest, I don't know, Wol- I did Wolverine or Sabretooth guest star and uh, Ghost Rider guest star. But yeah, so it that thought is what carried over to, it was uh, the book I pitched was called The Night Shift. And The Night Shift is a, um, what do you call this? They were uh, bad guys that Captain America fought uh, back in the 80s. The, the leader of The Night Shift is a guy called The Shroud. Who looks like a mashup between Batman and Moon Knight. So um, he's uh, he's a guy with a black cape, and he went out, he went to the Himalayas, and he trained with some monks there to learn magic, and he can control, you know, the what do you call this, the 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 dark, you know, the dark energies of the Marvel universe. Uh, other uh there was also two characters called the brothers grim so the brothers grim are are criminals and they use magic to do they they're like a magic act uh and they're twins and they wear masks and they and the masks are are, are skull masks um, but all of their weapons are based on magic acts. So they would have like, ro- you know, they can pull ropes out of thin air or they can magically make chains appear. Uh, so, so yeah, so imagine they're like uh, uh, magicians that uh, are also cat burglars. Um, and then their base of operations was called the Tower of Terror, I think, if, if I remember right. Which was being uh, the one in charge of the Tower of Terror was called the Grave Digger. So in the old Marvel comic books, the Grave Digger would uh, is the narrator of the horror stories or ghost stories that that happen in the Tower of Terror. And then the last character, or at least the other character they had, was a, a, a female character called Dancin Macab. Dance and Macab was a dancer, and that's how she cast her spells. She would, you know, when she does her dance, she weaves her magic spell to to attack or to protect uh, people. So those are the main characters that I I pitched, and they were what I did was they investigated supernatural crime in the Marvel universe. Uh, so the Shroud would investigate the crime. He would have the brothers Grimm back him up. Uh, the Grave Dig. I in in the comic book I converted the Tower of Terror from a haunted house into a nightclub, uh, and that's where all of the supernatural creatures gather. Um, and Dansen was essentially my uh, the guy in the chair. So I I uh, made her. 
continue her dance, but she would dance in cyberspace. And she would be, that's how she collected information by air quotes, dancing in cyberspace. Oh yeah, so so coming from that, you know, template, I had that in mind. I wrote four issues for that pitch or four four synopses for the pitch um, and sent it, and it got sent back to me with a very nice rejection letter. Um, so sorry. So that's a just. <laughs> so I mean, to 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 all of you guys, you can already see the parallels, right? You can already see what I took from that pitch. And then I transplanted it and, you know, uh, changed this, you know, this detail and that detail. Eventually, they became Trese, the Kambal, Hank, and Dansen eventually became Jobert. <laughs> uh, so she didn't become a main uh, a supporting character, but the essence of, a, of like a ghost, uh, a ghost dancer in the internet. Uh, you know, surfing the internet still became a character in the book. So let's say in some other universe that pitch got approved. Um, yeah, it, I mean, it's highly possible, you know, that I would still, because that being set in the Marvel Universe, I feel that eventually I would still go back to wanting to write something based in the Philippines and based on our mythologies. I'm not so sure it would have become Trese, but I'm sure I would have ended up writing something, uh, what do you call this, set in our country with, you know, uh, Pinoy characters in it. Long answer. Well, we, we, we appreciate it, sir. And it's their loss because we got Trese. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully we can still have uh, Trese cross over to the Marvel Universe one of these days. So maybe it will still... Uh, storyline will still come true well that's Where is okay. the chat here okay okay uh, and that's, that's that's the audience <laughs> yeah. okay up next do you have a question sorry again okay so i have a question about your standalone cases so like if you had to choose any one of your standalone cases completely rehash or remake which would it be and why? When you say, you mean by, so I would be given the chance to what, rewrite it? Yes, sir, in the comics. Yes, sir, to comple yeah. completely change it or remake it, rehash the plot, stuff like that, sir. Wow, good question. Um, I think, let me, let me grab the books. <laughs> See, I would, I would, well, first of all, I would, Probably make sure that that uh, Trese's mom just has one name <laughs> and not end up with two names. Uh, but let me see. I mean, I think I can't think of. And where's book one? Book one, book one. Murder, murder. Valetta Drive. Rules of the Race, Tragic Case, Secret Constellation. I mean, it's. I can't think of a... Wait, and then where's... Sir, how about uh, Dominic's name, sir? Thomas Dominic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, thanks, thanks to the... Um, thanks to the... He's, I think Dominic is now his official name, isn't it? Yes, sir. <laughs> um, and we had this other... Uh, what do you call this? And then, of course, JB introduces another Asuang Prince. Uh... <laughs> Yes, yes, Aubrey, Marites Melinda, I think would be a great name for her. There you go, Triple M. Yes, thank you, Farron. Miranda, Melinda, Marites. <laughs> this is, I'm looking at the chat. This is, this is going to go the back of my head, and I'm, gonna, I'm sure I'm going to make a mistake in the next book, and suddenly <laughs> she'll be called, called Marites. Uh, I can't think of a one that I would completely... Uh, Change. I think if given the chance, I would want to um, probably add pages to some of them and just to um, flesh out certain details. Uh, I mean, I think so far we, we've had, um, what do you call this? Uh, I mean, thankfully, it seems like, you know, even like the first uh, 
like books one and two again that was written on like a monthly schedule um so you know very uh, and and it was it's a very compressed story so uh you know we, you do end up with that um what do you call this the 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 info dump explanation page of what happens you know at a certain point right so given the chance i would love to allow those scenes to breathe or to add more you know add just one more scene just to establish the motivation of that character to make it all make sense uh, let me give it one last look unlike little known murder outpost on kalaya and street embrace of the unwanted association juice yeah i mean i think i think like a lot of these stories a lot of these stories the original drafts went beyond 20 pages um so eventually i would need to compress them and find a way to still have the story make sense um <laughs> and the chat is now filled with <laughs> for the mom <laughs> um, let's see let's see if there's really one thing here that i would want to like for for example just to be more concrete about it and not to be uh rambling like for example in wanted bed spacer i had that moment where trece uh, meets a ghost in one of the rooms um before she ends up discovering that it was um what do you call this the the bangungot up uh on the roof right given a chance i would have added more pages where i would have established the the ghost in that room um so just so that at least it 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 helps the reader or at least it for a moment makes the reader think that it's because of a haunted of you know uh, a haunted room that caused all of the, the the suicides in that in that dormitory before we end up with the uh, with the with the bangungot uh, on the rooftop uh, but I'm so yeah I don't know, technically I don't know how uh you know what readers thought of that particular scene but you know that's uh that's a scene or a moment that i would have loved that goes to hang yourself because of bad grades that's right aubrey um then i would have wanted to you know it, it would have it would have made it would have made more sense to the story uh but at the same time you know just uh in in the typical fashion you know uh murder mysteries would introduce you to a suspect and then later reveal to you that oh this is the reason why this suspect then then that's what i would have it, it's moments like those that what i would have loved to have expanded uh, a bit more all right that's good. yep <laughs> so um, more, more pages right <laughs> to flash yeah, yeah, but again, I think it really helps that you know, uh, and I and you can already see how me and Kajo have broken away from the twenty page. Yes, sir. <laughs> right, um, and I think it's really us want. I mean, it's a way for us to, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, break eventually breaking the formula or breaking the mold still makes the process fun and unpredictable. Uh, so lately, uh, I have been giving. Uh, Kanjo Marvel style uh, scripts where I you know I don't necessarily break it down into pages I I, I kind of give uh, a bit of a page breakdown but uh, it's up to Kanjo to like you know extend it or or compress it uh, so okay sir that's a great uh, great, great that's a great answer <laughs> Um, so, sir, um, uh, which character in the comics uh, would you wish to expand more in the future, and why this character, sir? And people are asking for Malexi, by the way, sir. <laughs> oh, um, it feels like we. <laughs> it feels like uh, why? When was the last time we saw Malexi? He played a pretty good role in book six. Yes, sir. Yes, I think I've le we've left uh, a big cliffhanger for you guys on what happened after book six. Book seven kind of um, went to... Book seven was essentially us uh, uh, introducing more of the brothers. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think Maliksi is definitely, um, and and the, what do you call this, the Tikbalang clan is one of those, uh, yes, I knew somebody would say Iglop, uh, uh, come into play. Um, you know, I'm sure, you know, they can't, you know, they, they can't stop Maliksi or even him uh, with his uh, Maverick Rider identity. It's something that, you know, I'm, I'm sure they'll, Ever Trece or his father says he's not gonna stop <laughs> being the Maverick Rider. Um, who else? In um, what we have been doing, as you guys can see, is yeah, we've we've introduced, you know, just to, um, and then sometimes it's 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 really what catches my attention, right? I'm I could be trying to write. Uh, another Maliksi story, but if you know the the Jimmy story just came to mind, and I just had to write it down. So yes, Maliksi got uh, put on the side for book seven. Um, uh, yeah, I mean Bongo Bean was uh, is asking about a Blasco story. Like, yeah, I mean, um, so he, the the other trivia about Blasco, the name Blasco, is. Uh, and yes, Dante Blasco is not uh, <laughs> inspired by Dante Blasco, although he might be. It's possible that was he was in the back of my head. But uh, when was that? Um, uh, back in the late eighties, I think. Maybe there was a ABS-CBN had a contest. Uh, ABS-CBN just relaunched uh, coming out of People Power, so maybe that was 87, 88, and they were announcing a contest for scriptwriters. Um, and I was probably still in high school at that time. Did I go to high school? See, I forget now. <laughs> um, but the thing, so they were asking for scriptwriters, and essentially they were asking for uh, send us a pilot episode a show um, and um, I came up with a show called uh, Blasco uh, Psychic Investigator um, and I wrote it down and I actually had to ask my mom to type it up on her electric typewriter <laughs> because I wasn't you know A she didn't want me to touch her typewriter mm -hmm. back then B of course she could type it up faster um so yeah, it was a, uh, and and uh, the plot line for that was I I I what do you call this? I ripped off a Sherlock Holmes uh, plot line, and transplanted it in the Philippines. I remember watching an old uh, Sherlock Holmes cartoon. I think it was the Sign of the Four, um, and one of the interesting things about it was that the uh, it was about people who were dying who faced their, who died because they faced their greatest fears, which I think was also the plot line of young Sherlock Holmes movie. Uh, but there, but it was uh, a case where people were dying because they were found dead due to a heart attack and, you know, coroner would essentially say they died because of fear. You know, they were frightened to death. Um, and, and I had a guy named Blasco, uh, who was a psychic. Uh, so whenever he touched objects, he could see images or you know, the psychic uh, energies from certain objects. And and just to have action in the story, I had, I introduced a character, his, uh, his uh, pamangkin, his, you know, his nephew, uh, Phil Am kid who just came home. So it was your typical Balikbayan kid, uh, came home, comes home to the Philippines to go to college, and he was the martial artist uh, because you know I was uh, I'm a karate fan, karate kid fan. So, um, so and of course the the nephew plays the role of the the non-believer, right? So he doesn't believe in all of these supernatural things occurring, but he has been sent home by his mother to study in the university in Manila. And he has to live with his crazy uncle who says he's psychic. Um, so there, so Blasco is the name of that, 
psychic investigator. I wrote one episode uh, and obviously didn't win. <laughs> Never produced into uh, a show. But again, it go, you know, for me, that that's part of the foundation of Trece, that I've always had this, you know, want to tell uh, a story, a supernatural story, but have never really found the right ingredients to, to make it work. Um, so there. So yes, one of these days we will, uh, probably not the same story I pitched to ABS-CBN, but one of Blasco and Miranda Trece. Okay, so I have another question for you, sir. Um, so, like, a month ago, a member named Apple Borja from the main Tresa Facebook group made a poll of on which among the Tresa Kuyas were the hottest. So, how do you, huh? how do you feel about Father Matt being the leading one in the poll? I'm surprised. I am so surprised. Uh, um, I'm not surprised that Verdugo was number two. I kind of thought Jimmy would be... Uh, uh, the number one uh, would get the number one vote, but uh, yeah, I guess it seems like there's something about uh, um, the the untouchable <laughs> the, uh, being the most untouchable one that made uh, other Trese get the most votes. I don't know what that says about the people in the group or whoever voted for him. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm amazed at all these um, what do you call this these uh, emojis and graphics that you guys are posting uh, <laughs> where the heck do you guys get this anyway yes next question so sir um, <laughs> so sir so you've announced before that uh, there's a chance that fans can create a bloodline story with you um, is there a way we can know about the details? Yeah, I just haven't. Um, uh, we've we've postponed that because, well, Bloodlines Two is postponed. I mean, it's still being worked on. So um, I want to. Uh, when I do kick it off, I want it to be more organized uh, and make sure that it it really. What do you call this? Um, scheduled you know uh so that uh so that you guys don't end up waiting for you know uh, for the book to come out five years later um so yes so when we are ready uh, we will announce how to uh submit storylines for for bloodlines all right that's great uh bex okay so um my other question is related to the kuyas again so what were the origins behind the names, their personalities, and all their egos of each of them? Where did that come from? Well, they're, well name-wise, they're based on my real-life uncles. Um, so yeah, my mom has uh, four brothers, and I we would visit them on weekends uh, at our Lola's place. Um, and essentially, they were our kuyas. Uh, we grew up, you know, playing with them. Uh, some of them would go on anything, uh, you know, the Trece had not encountered anything of demonic nature. And that's and, and it's a storyline that happens a lot in the Philippines, right? We've seen, we have our fair share of uh, possession stories. Um, and yes, my uncle also, my uncle the priest introduced me once to, uh, is it Father Sikia? I think Father Sikia is one of our priests who was trained by the, by the Vatican on, on uh, performing exorcisms, has written a book about it. So that came to mind, you know, that I needed a, a priest character that would do exorcisms. Essentially, you know, dividing the, the the roles and responsibilities of the Trece family, right? So, Alexandra takes care of everything from lower mythology. Matthias takes care of everything that's from hell <laughs> and demonic on nature. The, there's a uh, is 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 my attempt to you know create a character that is a mashup of uh, the gentleman thief of Lupin. 
Lupin the Third and uh, and all the ninja characters I ever grew up with, wanting to create you know our our own ninja character, um, and and it's driven by the thought of we keep saying that she's the sixth child of the sixth child, but we've never talked about the other children. Um, so and and it just made me think. Yeah, if you're part of the Trece family, I'm not so sure if you end up becoming an accountant or, you know, working in a bank, um, which might be an interesting twist uh, later on. But yeah, I just thought that they would become a family of uh that explore the supernatural. Um, so yeah, it was, you know, based on a lot of uh, other... Uh, book characters and TV characters I grew up with, and the names were based on my uncles. Graduate po ba talaga si Professor Hick? Yes, yes, he graduated. Mongo Bean, thank you for that question. Okay. All right, so this question is a little more fun. So, if you get kidnapped, and there has to be one Trece character that has to rescue you, who would it be and why? I were kidnapped. The question is, who or what kidnapped me? <laughs> hmm, that's interesting as well. Was I kidnapped by regular humans or by supernatural creatures? Hmm. Okay, maybe you got kidnapped by a human, and for the other one, you got kidnapped by supernatural creatures. Okay. 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 I mean, tre I mean, out of the uh, out of the Trece is still the 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 investigator. So I would, I mean, she's like the best. I would probably say she's the best investigator of the bunch. Uh, um, so yeah, I would still bet on Alexandra finding me. But as far as like uh, my second choice would be, as far as you know, tracking me down is concerned and. <clears throat> and finding me would be Verdugo, I think, would be the other best tracker. Ooh, people are uh, saying Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I think so. But yeah, I mean, I mean, Alexandra has the best contacts in the underworld. You know, she can easily get Manang Muning to try and get her cats to look for me. Um, and and yeah, the. Kuno and Nuno can easily ask around uh, in the underworld. So, so yeah, she's got the best contacts there. Ooh, okay. So, next question would be kind of related to the other, to the first question. So, this time, if you had to pick one Trece character to go drinking with, who would it be and why? The... The first one that came to mind is is still Hank. Whether it's Hank in the comic book or Hank in real life, <laughs> I, think, I think Hank would have the best stories to tell. Of uh, because he would be the ones hearing the stories from all of these drunk people and creatures. You know, the that's where the best stories come from. Uh, yeah, I think it would be good old Hank. Be a great uh, guy to grab a drink with. Okay, so speaking of stories, okay, so the fandom obviously have their own interpretations on the comics and the anime. So we're going to go ahead and ask: Have you seen a certain fanon theory that you found to be very interesting? Oh, not uh, not lately. I think. Uh... And and if if I did see anything that I can't, then I would I what do you call this? <laughs> I would probably not acknowledge it to you guys because then that would be telling. Oh, but, but let me at least say that uh, what do you call this? Um, there's a uh, um, what do you call this? There's a reason why the. Um, what do you call this? I think it's most of them in the group already. I think most of the... Uh, I think Tanya's in the Trese group and I think Mick and Zig are also there. 
I think some Netflix people are also there. Wow. <laughs> so, um, and some people from the, I mean, they, 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 they joined the group, you know, uh, way ahead knowing that the anime was coming out, right? Uh, but yes, there have been, uh, so at the very least, I, you know, I will, I will acknowledge that there would be moments when, uh, some of you guys would post something, then I would quickly message Tanya and say, did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> so oh yeah some you have you guys have definitely posted some very interesting theories uh which have either come close to uh <laughs> to to things that we've talked about uh and there are some things that um I'm, you know, that I've been plan or is planning to do for future books of course um but yeah i think that's also the 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 tricky part and for me sometimes i wish that oh i wish i didn't read that <laughs> because then i'd be tell me would feel like if people are already thinking about um then it feels like it's the expected thing to do it, it's it's the uh, um i mean like just like going back to the origins of the kambal when i said half breed immediate expectation was that they were are they half a swan you know are they half encanto or something um uh, and they almost became that until when i sat down and started to write book three started to figure out um, who is this you know wh who is the big bad for book three uh that eventually the thought of connecting the Origins of the Kambal with the origin with the origins of the Talagbusao uh, came to mind. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I think it's something that it it uh, it ends up at the back of my head, and actually, it's one of those things where when the writing starts, it's like, well, if everyone the, the thought process is if everyone's thinking this is what's going to happen, do I follow that same track? Uh, or do I complete and give it a twist later on, or do I completely change it? Uh, but there, so so yes, you guys, and which makes me, you know, I always tell Tanya that that you guys on the FB group are like the the better detectives compared to Trece. It's like, how did you guys figure that out? <laughs> oh, it's here. That's good. That's a great answer. So, sir, speaking of uh, fan creations, okay, um, have you, um, this is kind of be like uh, a rodeo side of things, have you seen any spicy Rule 34 content of your characters? Oh, only the ones that, uh, that I was forced to read. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you remember that, right? I was, uh, the, um... Uh, which 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 Gayuma, Gayuma, sir. Gayuma? yeah yeah I mean I was invited to be part of that podcast um, and and uh, I think Hank was there and a bunch of other guys and they uh, we did a reading and I didn't know I mean they I knew I was going to be the narrator but I said I don't want to read it and I'll just read it cold Thanks. so yes I think that's I think I read Gayuma and I read I read one years ago. I think it was in archive.org. That might have been the first one. I, I read one of them and then I know more stuff came out, but I never went back there. <laughs> <laughs> there. So uh, our our fellow members has, are now hiding their uh, You got their, yeah, their so the question, the question the question to the uh, uh, to the group is what what's been your favorite uh, Rule 34, not safe for work story out there. <laughs> People are saying, Talag Buso Trese. What? Talag oh, no! <laughs> oh, sir, someone yeah, actually uh... some, someone actually made a Talag Buso Anton story. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> it, is, it is crazy, sir. <laughs> Okay. I mean, you know, like I said, like what I said in that uh, in that podcast. I mean, it it, it um, amazes me. I mean, it's it's great how that you know 
for that matter, that you can fall in love with the character so much that you start to, yeah, you create your what if stories, right? And yeah, this is one of those territories, the not safe for work territories that you want to explore. And I think if it gets you writing, I think that's, you know, I think that's a, it's a great way to stretch your creative muscles. Eventually, you know, you, uh, I can only hope that you start writing your own stuff. Uh, we all start, you know, we, we have all uh, written our own little bits of fan fiction at one point or another. Because again, yeah, we've, we've, uh, we have immersed ourselves in these worlds and characters so much that we can see them living and breathing and doing things which we don't want to talk about. <laughs> but um, there, I mean, you know, again, we've heard so many stories of, of uh, people who started fan fiction and eventually that became the reason why they became published authors. Uh, that was their starting point. So, uh, you know, if this is... If you were writing uh, uh, Tresia fan fiction and uh, not safe for work type stories is a starting point of your writing, then do stuff with your own characters. And what <laughs> see see a link that said okay, and it suddenly disappeared. <laughs> okay, so sir, I remember back then you said that you guys planned a Kambal spin off. What are the plans for it now? I guess it's in, well, it's not at the top of my head right now. I mean, it might be something that can come out in a Bloodlines uh, book. Because, yeah, the, the tricky thing about the Kambal is that, uh, what do you call this? They, they just love to party and they want to, they love just love to shoot stuff. So, so that's what the story is going to be about. Just about them partying and shooting stuff. Um... So, so yeah, I mean, I've, I have yet to think of another, you know, uh, uh, in, you know, I think of them as like interludes. It's the stuff that happens in between cases. Um, I tried, you know, I tried, there was a time when I think in one of the cases, I tried to make them part of the investigation and it just didn't feel right. So I had a case. And I think it was for Association Jews of Livewell Village. I had a scene where while Trese was investigating the power plant, I had the twins go around the, the Livewell Village investigating, pretending to be, you know, salesmen or something like that so that they can get information. It just didn't feel right. I mean, for me, it just felt weird that they were playing the parts of investigators because for me, they, they've always, I mean, they, the primary role they play is to protect Trese and to, you know, get any aswang or threat out of her way. Um, so, so yeah, so if, uh, if we do make uh, Kambal spin-offs, then it would be either, it's either happening in one big party or one big fight or both. <laughs> One big party fight, yes. Oh, hey. Oh, over here. <laughs> so, we, I was going to ask the, about the other spinoff, the one with Maliksi. Back then, you said that you and Sir Kajo was planning to have a Maliksi spinoff. Um, will that ever be continued or not anymore? Um, I don't know. Um, there's... Uh, it's, it's, I mean, uh, it might still, I mean, right now the way we're, as, as, as you might, you, you can already get a hint of it, like in, in, um, in book seven, for example, I mean, whenever we do these one-off storylines, that's, for me, that's a way to test, you know, does the, does this character have legs? In other words, you know, can I tell more stories about, this character without Trese. Can I tell, you know, Precinto uh, Trese, Precinto 13 is, was a size of, can I tell stories in the Trese universe uh, that just focuses on the cops uh, or focuses on, on uh, supernatural stories that don't necessarily need Trese's intervention. Um, so yeah, so I mean, if ever, uh, so I'm not putting it aside, it's just that I haven't, 
completely figured out what would the Maliksi story be. Um, so you'll, I mean, in book eight, you're going to see another spin-off uh, story. And and for me, you know, after writing that story, I could already figure out, you know, what could be two, three stories later on for that particular character. Uh, in Maliksi's case, it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's, I mean, he's obvious a maverick rider is you know hugely inspired of course by mask rider black and all of those motorcycle rider so you know uh telling a story uh using that template but in the Tresa universe i still haven't figured out uh so i use it and and again, the, you know, him him becoming Maverick Rider was supposed to be a contrast uh, to the judges in the in book five. So you know, you have the attention whore <laughs> that is Maliksi, and then you have the you know, and he's doing it for fun versus the judges who are doing it because they feel it's the right thing to do. Um, so that was the contrast I was trying to set up on that one and. Of course, I just wanted to, in book six, it just felt natural that he maintained that identity uh, to become part of, of Verdugo's uh, squad. But definitely, it can still happen. I just haven't figured out what the what makes a um, Maverick story unique and different from a Verdugo story, from a, you know, from, a, from a, an Alexander story. <laughs> with a vlog channel yep yep he would most probably do that yes uh, what's there uh, well, you'll finally find out the ending of Tiger Burning Bright when it comes up <laughs> so so yeah um, I have to wait for that Kajo, Kajo messaged me, so I have a, I have a little, we, me, Kajo, and Nida have a chat thread. Kajo says, Budge, let's not show any pages from book eight. I said, okay. <laughs> we, we want it to be a surprise. Where do you get these crying, crisping uh, emojis? It's fantastic. Is this what we can Gretch do? created them, sir. Oh, Gretch. Ah, uh, fantastic. I should come here more often. And there's stress with me. It just feels like I have too many social networks now running. Um, so yeah, Tiger Burning Bright. Um, and and since one of you guys already guessed it, I guess it's no harm to confirm that yep, you'll finally see the uh, Bantay and the Ascalero story. I think somebody in the Facebook page uh, figured that out. Uh, but as to what that story is about, let's see how, what, how you guys react to that. Um, what's the other story there? Wow, I see I can't read. I read it. And that's what I need to do today. <laughs> I need to go back and finish writing those stories. Uh, but yes, you know, Tiger Burning Bright and uh, Ascaleros is at least two stories that you will see in book eight. <laughs> ah, yeah, the... Just to just to address what Aubrey is saying, yeah, the the um, still I you know I don't know what's gonna happen uh, in between book nine to thirteen. <laughs> well, I kind of do, but the Ballet trials is something that I'm uh, hoping to start. Uh, I mean, we we as um, wherever we can, wherever possible, you know, we we do give you hints of what happened in the Ballet trials in up in the Ballet three. For me, in the back of my head, it's still, um, you call this, uh, I still see, I would love to be able to tell the the great Balete Three Trials as its own story arc. Um, whenever it feels like it's appropriate, then I talk about something that happened up in the tree. Uh, or some, you know, what trial, what test did she go through? To um, survive, you know, to, to become the Babaylan Mandarigma. Um, so, yeah, so um, I don't know when, <laughs> uh, but yeah, most probably between 9 and 13, we'll continue to hint 
and maybe even show the stuff that happens in the in the tree but eventually sometime in the future i'd love to just do like excuse me one whole book that that shows her life what what her life was like up in the tree okay so next we're going to ask three people from the audience it to ask their burning questions to Sir Budget. So the first one will be choosing among these guys. Hmm, eeny, meeny, miny. Hmm, this Debard looks very interesting. Well, I'm gonna unmute you, okay, Debard? Right, let's invite him in. Hi, Paul. Okay, hey, hello, Debard. Um, so, um, uh, do you have any questions for Sir Budget? Hello, Paul. Hi, Debard. Hi po, uh, question lang. Thank you po, Sir Baj, sa mga kwento. Um, tanong ko lang po, kailan po magkaka-jibolical 2? Ah! Stories. Kasi mahilig din po ako sa stories nyo. Pati yung kay stories ni Hank. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, it, it's, um, it's something that uh, it will... I don't know. Uh, I mean, it... I just haven't had the chance to 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 get back to that you know to those kinds of stories. But I, uh, I mean, now that we are with with Avenida, we have been talking about um, what do you call this uh, reprinting tales from the diabolical. Um, but of course, as you know, the priority is to reprint all of the volumes under Avenida. Uh, so yeah, book three just came. Uh, sorry, book seven just got reprinted, and that's the Avenida edition. Uh, and and yes, just to answer your questions, there's no. Kajo did not redraw the whole book. <laughs> we just fixed typos, and I think he fixed some of the panels that he didn't like. So he like retouched, you know, a face here or there. Um, and and uh, what do you call this? I think he like started to use more of the of his gray tones in some of the pages. Um, and then next year, of course, is when we will reprint four, five, and six. Their Avenida. Maybe after that is when we can go back to doing um, reprinting tales from the diabolical. And what I was telling Nida was that I would love to. Uh, release it as a thicker volume so uh, maybe not just reprint it as you first saw it in this print but to release it with more stories uh, uh, under the Avenida edition so yep it might take a while <laughs> to get back to the diabolical but we will do that we do that's a great that's a great great uh, way to do it I mean I always want to hear more stories about Hank the bartender. The bartender. I'm sorry, man. They made me do it. They made me do it. They helped me at gunpoint. They said they said they would kill me. They would they would throw another bomb inside the diabolical. <laughs> It happened in the comics. It happened in the anime. <laughs> that's that's too much for me, man. No, but hey, thanks, thanks for thanks for inviting me, uh, Jesse Group. Happy anniversary, yeah. and happy Thank milestone. You. Wow. And Budge, really, I thanks. Would not have known. That was that was a great voice, Hank. I would not have. I, I've been I've been great. taking voice lessons because maybe I can okay, voice yeah, my character can sometime on the anime. I don't know. <laughs> I'm still that. I'm still shooting for that. <laughs> you, can, you can now be old, old old man number five in the next episode. <laughs> Uh, akin yun na, akin na, akin na yun. <laughs> Old man number five, di ba? <laughs> I'm marking off my territory. Old man oh. number five in crowd and, scene and, seven. <laughs> thank, thank you for, I mean, you mentioned it earlier. I've been listening all throughout, and then thanks, you, uh, you mentioned it earlier on the on Media Room. Uh, thanks for reading <laughs> Gayuma. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that, that wonderful NSFW uh yeah right <laughs> the fanfic yeah yeah, yeah. 
Exact, exactly. So, so I, I'm just happy that people are having a f- uh, fun, fun with that. Yes, Hank, we will, we will get back to the diabolical sometime soon. Yeah, I like, I like the fact that with the reprint, you guys are adding more material. That sounds great, man. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something that's been uh, in the back of my head, and there, there has been, there is. I mean, the last time I wrote. Yeah, the last time I wrote a, a diabolical story essentially was um, I think I posted it in Facebook and in the diabolical blog spot page. But um, it was it was Hank going up, Hank the bartender going up against uh, Mamba Barang. Um, so, which is something that I plan to, or well, one of the things I want to do with that because it felt. I, you know, compared to the other diabolical prose stories, it felt like it's either I rewrite that because it didn't feel like it, um, it it's not up to par <laughs> with the other stories, or I turn that into a comic book story. So, uh, but yeah, that that would be uh, that was the last time I got right. Uh, uh, ju- it was my attempt to do a solo Hank story. Um, so yeah, I mean, going back to the question of you know the 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 spin off Malixi stories, it's it's really trying to figure out what's what makes this individual character story different uh, from everyone else, and how does it show a unique side of the Trese universe that you won't normally see if Trese was if Trese got the spotlight. Oh, so there it was on um, Facebook chat. Anyway, <laughs> go ahead. It's time to go. No, hey, man, thanks. I just have I just have that one question. I have a whole bunch of other stuff, but I could, I guess I could ask you that. Uh, just thanks again, man, for just like you know sharing all your story ideas. Whether you whether you ask for my approval or not, it's a different story. But you know, that's all right. Well, you've been doing it for how long? It's okay. I guess you can keep doing. It. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, seriously, man. Thanks. I mean, listen. Talk. Talk about the stuff you have in store. All the little teasers. I mean, it just reminds me how why I enjoy being a fan and a friend of yours. You know, more power, buddy. And um, yeah, and happy Halloween. Happy, happy Halloween. Halloween. Oh yes, of course. This is. Huh. This is the uh, the holiday that uh, you and Karen and, and all of us uh, always look forward to. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, just uh, just another you know uh, background for for everyone else. I mean, again, back in the nineties, uh, meeting Hank and Karen, though whether it's meeting up at a bar <laughs> or meeting up at a friend's house to play. Uh, Vampire the Masquerade. I mean, those are the... Those or those, are the those, those, those watch parties we would have. I think we did Pulp Fiction, X-Files. Yes, yes. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. We would do watch parties of oh. obscure, you know... Mga hard, mga hard to find in the Walasa Theater stuff. Yeah, correct. You know, we would... The El Mariachi, I think, was one of the things we watched. Yes. Um... And and yeah, I mean those are those are the I mean a, a lot of inspiration came from those times we were hanging out together that eventually found its way into the stories we're now telling. So, oh yeah, <laughs> thanks for that one. <laughs> okay, so that concludes our great Balete podcast. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. And Sir Budget, thank you so much for making time for us. And you too, Sir Hank, thank you so much for joining in. Thanks, that was a great ending. <laughs> Oh, Sir, Sir, Sir Hank, Sir Hank. Yes. So, so, so someone was asking, Kailan daw po ang Disco Hank cosplay niyo po? Ah, is that from K? <laughs> Is is Kay here this afternoon? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. She's Hi, here. Kay. Yes, kakonchaba ko yan si Kay. Um, kakonchaba talaga, you know. Um, you know what? I've got. I'll be honest with you guys. I've got the suit, right? I've got, I've got the suit. Na na napatahi ko na yung ano yung sa anime, the purple, the purple, the yes, purple disco hank suit that that I've been wanting to cosplay. My problem now is I'm still talking to the wig person. It's quite difficult oh. with the wig. 
because, well, if you guys don't know, I might just share it with you. I've lost a lot of my hair even before the pandemic. <laughs> I, I didn't lose my hair out of consumption from COVID. It, it just, I just lost my hair. Uh, it comes with age. So anyway, I need a wig, right? And the person I'm speaking to, Siyempre, it's stress eh, diba? Mahal ko to. Yung suit na pinatahi ko, as in pera ko yun, it's like a full proper purple suit. High-end materials with lining and whatnot. Same thing with my wig. I'm not just gonna buy any old wig. I am approaching a wig maker. I'm having a wig wow. custom made using natural human hair. Real human hair. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I wanted to use tikbalang oh. hair, but Wow. But not just knows what happens with thick balang hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> then, awesome. No, but seriously, seriously, you actual human hair. So, siempre it's una una magasto siya plus iba yung fitting sa wig. So, yon, that's that's the update on the cosplay. Definitely as soon as it's done. Actually, I was ho- sort of hoping I could get it done by Halloween, but hindi nga ano, uh, mukhang hindi aabot with my wig maker. Also, I have to go out and see them and, you know, iba, iba rin yung measurement sa wig kesa sa katawan eh, sa ulo. Um, yeah, so that's why it's taking so long. I'm definitely not gonna make it for Halloween. I'm gonna try to make it for Budget's birthday, pero hindi ko na lang kumahabol yun. Maybe a question sa group. Yeah, babato ko na lang since I'm talking, di ba, you guys? Ay, you that's your mistake that's your first mistake guys you left me up with an open mic hello oh, no. does anybody know when budget's birthday is oh <laughs> creator of <laughs> trash birthday. birthday trivia question <laughs> <laughs> the answer Where zero got it diba? um in november night <laughs> <laughs> yep yep wow who said november 9 was that you bex I did, I did. I'm the one who said November. <laughs> well, that's why you're our our, our fearless leader. Yes. <laughs> Alam lahat. Um, oh gosh, a little fun fact for you guys. For you guys, I usually greet him at midnight on his birthday. Hopefully, nakatakot kayo ha. May pa midnight, midnight pa kayo ha. Okay. No, but seriously, I'll try, I'll try to get it done by, by hopefully, Depend on the week and, and how long it takes them to to make it. Diba? I don't know if they have to magipon pa sila ng natural human hair. But, yun. Kasi yung sa balbas and everything, okay na yun. Medyo okay na yun. Yung kulay, may kung mag-bronzer ng konti. Baka mong prosthetics ako, but all that stuff is like on the day of the shoot na eh. Diba? Yung wig yung kailangan ma- ma-prep na maayos. Hey, oh, that's gonna be awesome. Ayoko magmukhang wig yung wig. <laughs> yes, yes, of course, anyway, of course. That's, that's the answer, Kay. Thank you so much. Diba? Ano, Kay Kay. And, and everybody that also signed that petition, it's happening, it's <laughs> happening. I, mean, I, can, I can send pictures again to... Well, the... the, the fan book page. I can send you pictures of the of the of the suit. Yes. It's sitting there, you know. Sir, diba? sir Hank, yes. Uh, there's another request. Can you say the word, the 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 the, the famous phrase <laughs> Hank said in the anime? <laughs> um. Wow, NSFW din yata. Yes, sir. <laughs> tayo tayo lang naman po, sir. <clears throat> So yeah, to the the Trese group on Discord. <clears throat> Putang ina ka! Alright, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great way to end it, guys. Thank you for uh, being here at the the great Baleri podcast, Bex. Oh, before we end, we're going to take like two people from the audience and we're going to un- unmute them to so they can ask their questions to sir budge okay so we're no going surprises. to pick one from raise your hands you guys michael sean wants to talk so okay yeah um, I, I can see while 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 one of the guys gets uh, up to the mic um 
Book of Murders reprint will, you know, will, will as I said, will prioritize reprinting uh, the volumes first, and then, and then we talk about uh, with with. Uh, but I mean, it's something that uh, we're already planning with Avenida. It's just uh, the priority is to release the volumes uh, before the compilations. Yes, who's up on stage now, Becca? Okay, Michael Chen, uh, what, what do you want to ask for Sir Budge? Hello po. Uh, good day Hello. po sa lahat. Sir, salamat sa mga story nyo. Uh, I would like to ask na if you about dun sa 12 dimensions na nag, nagawa ko po. If, oh, okay. If okay lang pong i-expound ko pa. Uh, well, if if uh, eh, well, why not? <laughs> if more inspiration uh, comes your way, it's uh, going. And, uh, it would be great to see more of your art uh, online. Ayun na po, sir. Salamat po. Maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Michael, Sean. Okay, so for the second one, uh, Otter, uh, what do you want to ask for Sir Budge? Uh, salamat po, Kuya Seton. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, sir Budge, the question ko po is, will the madam return in bo in book 8, sir? And what would be kung babalik po siya, uh, what would probably be the effects po sa the entire Trece family po? Considering na uh, well on yung 6 eh ninakawan po sila ata ng tugok. The answer to your question is yes. That's all I can say. <laughs> what a tease. What a tease. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, Otter, uh, for the question. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it is, it's something that that, um, that me and Kajo have been talking a lot about. Um, so you, you, you'll get a hint. I can't say she's going to play a major role. You'll get a, you'll, you'll see her lurking in the background again. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I feel that I still haven't, um, uh, I mean, the next time she makes uh, an appearance and it'll be a significant one, uh, just, just to, you know, continue where, just to continue that storyline we started in, in book six. Uh, but yeah, it takes, it, um, I still haven't figured all of it out, but it's something that me and Kajo have been talking about. Um, uh, thank you, Pastor Buj. Uh, thank you, Otter. <laughs> no, no, Sipol, you cannot record Hank saying that phrase. Make it a ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so that concludes our podcast, guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, Max? And again, thank you guys for joining in to the Great Balete podcast. Thank you so much to the members that made this this career server the way it is. And thank you for spending time with us. Thank you, sir. Thank you as well. See you guys. Uh, I hope I can drop by again soon if I figure out how. <laughs> I will need guidance. Um, Sorry for the difficult yes, yes. sir. No problem, no problem. But thanks. See what the heck is that? that there, now there's an emoji of me floating around there somewhere. But yes, thank you, thank you again. See you guys. Um, have a great uh, weekend and uh, enjoy the uh, yeah the Halloween, <laughs> however you plan to celebrate it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you Bye. 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 Bye, guys. Thank Bye. you and goodbye. Bye. So yeah, um, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, Bex and I are grateful to ask questions for Sir Budge and thank you for other. Uh, who's the other one again? Michael Sean and Sir Hank for coming. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh. You can now exist. Thank you. <laughs> thank you guys and thank you so much for joining in. You guys are, have been a wonderful audience.